into a pit and sold him into slavery. And they told their dad, the dad who loved his son, they told him that a lion had eaten him. They told him he'd been killed by a lion. Imagine the grief that his dad suffered. And meanwhile, they sold him into slavery. He went to Egypt. He ended up in prison. God brought him out of prison and raised him up till he was the second in command in Egypt. And there was a famine came. And his brothers, they were starving. They had to go to Egypt and they had to go to their brother who they'd sold into slavery for him to give them some food. And he said, when they finally recognized him, he said to them, what you meant for evil, God, the God of the Bible, the only God who exists, who's in the heavens doing all that he pleases, what you meant for evil, he told his brothers, God made for good. Pardon? Speak up, my dear. Speak up, my dear. Jim. Jim, don't, uh, don't. I'm talk talking to the lady. Go, go and talk to me, my dear. I'd like to answer your question. If you've got any concerns or questions, we need to answer questions because we've got the truth. We've got the Bible. It's God's word. God doesn't lie. God is not a man who can lie. And so his brothers went to him. They finally recognized him. He says, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And that's true of God throughout every generation through the history of time. God uses evil for good. That's how powerful he is. So all the bad things that have happened for you in your life, it's all been brought to you by God. He's not the author of sin, but every bad thing that's happened to you, even the stupid things that you've done, it's all under the sovereign hand of God. And he uses it for good, my friends. He's all powerful, all knowing. And he's in the heavens doing all that he pleases. Do you believe that, my friend? You're debating it? Well, don't be, be, be debate too long. You don't know how long you've got left to live. You need to think seriously about your eternal destiny, my friends. Think seriously about where you're going to spend forever because you are going to spend forever somewhere. You see, God demonstrated his love toward us that even though we've sinned against him and don't deserve anything good from him, he sent his son. Even though... We have sinned against God and deserve to be thrown into a devil's hell. we will suffer unimaginable terror forever. It's a fearful thing to stand before God. We're not talking about a big fluffy bunny who is waving a rainbow flag. Celebrating diversity and inclusivism, my friends. God of the Bible, he has an absolute standard of right and wrong. And he is a lawgiver and we are lawbreakers. So what is a lawgiver going to do with guilty lawbreakers? What is a pure God going to do with impure people? He's holy, totally set apart, totally other from any part of his creation. What is a holy God going to do with unholy people like us? Well, he sent his son. He demonstrated his love toward us that while we are sinners and enemies of God, Christ died for the ungodly. Ungodly people like you and me. Jesus Christ died on that cross so that people like you and me can be forgiven. He died on that cross. He said it's finished. Paid in full. What was finished? Well he did it all my friends. There's nothing to be added to the cross of Jesus Christ. He died on that cross. He said it's finished. He bowed his head. Was buried. Three days later he resurrected himself back from the dead. He defeated death. Jesus Christ lives. Jesus Christ is the only religious leader who has ever defeated death. And he was resurrected and seen by over 500 people. Over 500 people, 500 eyewitnesses saw Jesus Christ after he'd been cruelly beaten to a pulp, nailed to that cross and buried. They saw him alive again. Jesus lives. No other religious leader has ever defeated death, have they? And we've got these same eyewitness accounts in the Bible. If you take time to read your Bible, my friends, it's very easily accessible, probably more easily accessible than Candy Crush or any Netflix movie. You can download it free of charge and read the Bible yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. 
and you can come to a knowledge of the truth. You know the Bible says, entrance of God's word brings light, understanding. You don't have to live your life with no understanding. Wondering where you came from, why you're here. Some of our young people, they don't even know what they are these days. They've got a, a list of pronouns as long as they're um, and it's either insanity or God, my friends. Insanity or God, the God of the Bible, the only God who exists. There is no other God other than the God of the Bible. If you're worshipping some other God other than Jesus Christ, who is God in flesh, if you're worshipping some other God other than Him, that's a figment of your imagination. That God doesn't exist. You see, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, the life, and nobody comes to the Father, nobody goes to heaven, but by me, he said. I can show you where he says it. Don't have to take my word for it. Jesus is the only way. He's your only hope. You've sinned against an infinitely holy God. You've sinned against holiness. You've broken God's law. You're a guilty lawbreaker, and you need Jesus. And without Jesus, you have no hope, my friends. Without Jesus' blood applied to you and covering your sin, there is no hope. All that's left is just a fearful, terrifying expectation of judgment. And so you can be forgiven. All of your sin, think about this my friends, all the wicked, nasty, sneaky, depraved things that you've done in life, the things that you're ashamed of, your guilty record, can, the slate can be wiped clean. All of your sin can be forgiven. The Bible says that Jesus Christ's blood cleanses us from all sin. All sin. All of it can be forgiven, my friends. That's good news. That's what God is offering you today. Forgiveness of sin. Wouldn't you like your sins forgiven? Wouldn't you like that guilty, condemning voice that knocks you about your sin day after day? All the wicked, nasty, sneaky things that you've done and the harmful things that you've done to others. Wouldn't you like that voice silenced? You see, Jesus is not only our sin offering, he's also our guilt offering. So you don't have to live a guilty life. You don't have to live your life with that knock, knocking voice. Yeah, that knocking voice, my friend, that tells you about all your sin. The shameful, wicked vile things that you've done in secret God knows about and that voice your conscience can be silenced you can live your life guilt free even though you've sinned terribly against the holy God enough already for him to throw you into a devil's hell where you'll suffer unimaginable terror forever if your soul ends up in hell my friends it's not going to be a happy ending there's going to be no party in hell there'll be no fun in hell, no comfort in hell. You see, fun and comfort, enjoyment, they're all the graces of God. They're all kindnesses of God. There'll be no graces of God in hell. It's where God pours out His undiluted anger upon all those who reject His Son, upon all those who reject the Gospel. The good news of what Jesus Christ has done. He's done it all. It's finished. He died on that cross to save his people from their sins. He achieved something on that cross. He didn't die just to make give us a nice little story at Christmas. He didn't die on that cross to make us savable. He actually did something on that cross. He said it's finished. He drank the cup of God's wrath, God's anger to the very last drop. That's what Jesus did. And so anybody who comes to him, anybody who takes advantage of his sacrifice on that cross, anybody who comes to Jesus Christ, all of their sins can be completely forgiven. And they can know it. Christianity is the only religion that can give any human being certainty of where they're going when they die. No other religion can give any human being that, can they? Can they? From the Bible, Have you read the, the Quran. Any I've read, I've read some of them. I know, though, that this is the truth. You see, and anything that contradicts this has to be a lie. You see, God has given us the Bible. He hasn't given us the Quran, or the the Book of Mormon, or the whatever hadiths. 
Jesus and, you know, any other holy book. Could, could you speak up a little bit? I'm going to be deaf. To, I'd like to talk to you. When did what? Right, because Jesus said, if you try to get to heaven any other way other than by him, you're no better than a thief or a robber. He says in John, John, you know the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, in John, the Gospel of John, uh, 14, chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, "I am the way, the way, not many ways." He said, "I'm the way, the truth is the truth." Al Haq, Jesus is it, and the life. No, because he. He's, no, I'm not assuming. I mean, you read the Bible as a whole book. You don't just pick one verse and single it out. You've got to read it as a whole book. You see, he's the promised Messiah. Right when Adam and Eve are first parents... What's that? On what? Yeah. Well, he's the way to heaven. He says, nobody comes to the Father but by me. And going to the Father means going to heaven. You know, that's... Well, you, you see, he said... Uh, unless you believe I am he, you will die in your sins. So we need to know who Jesus is. Because it's no good going to the Mormon Jesus, because that Jesus doesn't exist. It's no good going to the, the Muslim Jesus, who's just a prophet, because that Jesus doesn't exist. It's no good going to the Roman Catholic God, who, who you know, doesn't mind if you pray to his mum. That Jesus doesn't exist. Right. Well, let me let me ask you this. You know, if you do you work, have you got, if you work in a bank and you deal with 50, 50 pound notes, you look at fifty pound notes every day as they come in. Do you have to go looking at all the fake fifty pound notes to recognise them? You don't, do you? Well, it's an analogy. It's an illustration that might help you. If I know that this is the truth, and I do, and it is, then. If I know that it's, the, it's because the Bible says you can know the truth, you see. Right. Well, I mean, I, you know, I'm human. I, I might slip up and make an error in my words, but when I say this, when I repeat this, I can't be wrong, you see, because God's word is perfect. Yeah, many, many places. Right, no, no other religion has assurance. No other religion. That's what you said before. Right. That's correct. That's correct. No other religion well, can give. No, it isn't true. It is true, true. sorry. No, what I said was no other religion can give any human being certainty. Certainty. No, I haven't caught myself up, my dear. No other religion can give any human being certainty of where they go when they die. Because the Bible says this, that these things are written so that you may know you have eternal life. And you talk to a, you talk to a Muslim, I don't know if this lady is Muslim, but you talk to someone who believes in Islamic religion, they have no certainty of where they're going when they die. That's why they're visiting Mecca and praying five times a day and saying the Shihada and fasting at Ramadan. They're trying to earn their forgiveness, but they have no certainty... They have no assurance, my friends, because the Islamic religion doesn't give you that kind of assurance. You've just got to hope that Allah will be merciful to you on that day. There's no guarantee. It's like you just hit and hope. You just hope for the best. And all other religions are like that. Roman Catholics, they have no certainty of where they go when they die. They just hope that by visiting Lourdes, confessing their sins to a priest, praying the, the Hail Mary, praying the Rosary. They just scrape into purgatory maybe. You know, there's no assurance. But Christianity is the only religion that can give any human being, any image bearer of God, certainty of where they go when they die. Do you have certainty? Do you know where you're going to go when you die? Because you can, my friends. You can know for certain where you're going when you die. Only Christians go to heaven. Only Christians have their sins forgiven. Only Christians know God. And only Christians have certainty of where they're going when they die. We know for certain that our sins are forgiven. Not because
because we're good people, not because we're so nice and affable, not because we've got wonderful personalities and give money to charity. None of that, none of that gets us into heaven. You can be, ni you can be a nice person, but a lot of nice people are going to end up in hell. You see, being nice doesn't pay for your sin. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. God requires the shedding of blood for sin. And without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness for you. If you have no blood sacrifice for your sin, then you're still dead in your sin. It doesn't matter how many times you fast. You can pray 55 times a day, but your sin remains. God requires a blood sacrifice for sin. And so 2,000 years ago, God himself entered humanity and he became that sacrifice. He died on that cross to save his people from their sins. He bled and died in agony on that cross as a sacrifice that appeased, turned back the anger of God. God is angry. Your God, your creator, the one who gives you life and lends you breath, is angry. He's angry with the wicked every day. And he's going to judge. And after death, after death, my friends, it's judgment. When we die, we stand before him, the creator of everything, the one who knows you better than you know yourself. God knows your heart. I don't need to know your sin. God knows everything, my friends. His eyes are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. God is watching you every single second of your life. And he's not looking the other way when you sin. He's not turning a blind eye to your sin. He's holy, pure. And what is a holy, pure God going to do with unholy, impure people? People who've messed up big time. People who've messed up big time enough for him to throw them into hell. But today you can be forgiven. Today you can have your sins forgiven. That's good news, right? How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? How can your sins be forgiven any other way? They can't, my friends. You can, you can be the most religious Muslim, the religious, most religious Roman Catholic, the most religious Buddhist, Hindu, Mormon, or Jehovah's Witness. But your sin remains. Jesus Christ said, if you try to get to heaven any other way other than by him, you're no better than a thief or a robber. There's only one name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is your only hope today for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, whoever puts their trust in him and believes in him fully from their heart will not perish but will have everlasting life. Some people are going to perish. Don't let it be you my friends. Don't let it be you. Don't die and go to a devil's hell. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, not through Mary, not through Allah or Muhammad, not through Buddha or any Hindu God, not through Joseph Smith or Charles Russell, but through him the world might be saved. Jesus Christ is humanity's only hope. If you're part of the human race, we have something in common. We've, we've all sinned. You and I have sinned enough to incur God's wrath. Well, God can make you care. God can make you care. He made me care. I was like you. I didn't care. But God saved me. You see, I can't make you a Christian. I can't make you a Christian. None of you. I wish I could. If I could make anybody, any human being a Christian, then everybody in, in Carlisle here would be on their way to heaven. I can't make you a Christian. And there's nothing you can do to make yourself a Christian. It's a work of God, you see. God needs to change your heart, to give you a heart that cares, to take away your heart of stone, your heart that loves sin, your heart that's very selfish, your heart that drinks in iniquity like water. That's all we are. We are, we are sinners, my friends. We are born sinners, conceived in sin, right where life begins at conception. We are born enemies of God. And that's why you need reconciled to a holy God. You don't want to remain an enemy of God a moment longer. And you can be reconciled to God through the sacrifice of his son. You can be reconciled to God today. Be prepared to meet your God, the Bible says. Prepare to meet your God. Are you prepared?
prepared to meet God because you are going to meet him soon. It's not long for any of us. Look down this street, my friends. Within a hundred years from now, everybody that's in this street will have entered into eternity. Everybody. This lifetime is extremely short. Your life and my life, it's like a vapor, a puff of smoke that appears for a little while. And when God takes your life, the same God who gave you life, who knit you together in your mom's womb, and made you either male or female that you are, and you can't change your sex. No, you can't, my friend. It's impossible. God made them male and female, male and female. He made them. You can't change your sex, my friends. You try really hard, are you? Well, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you want to be the male that God made you to be? You, know, you look like a male. You sound like a male. Were you born a male? Were you born a little boy? Well, I'm just asking you. You're asking me how do I know you're a male? I'm just asking questions. Is it wrong to ask questions? Okay, you don't have to tell me. You can't force your hand. But the problem is when you were you were born either male or female. There's no con. What? You're male. I'm a girl. You're a girl. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Whenever you were born, you're still you're still that sex. God made you either male or female. And he, you know why he did that? You know why God made the male and female? The Bible answers, answers that. It says, have you not read Jesus said? He says, in the beginning, in the beginning, God made them male and female. Why? For this reason, he says, so that a man shall leave his mother and father, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That's God's definition of marriage right there. One man, one woman within a marriage. Any, any relationships outside of one man, one woman in a marriage is a sin. It's sinful. You see? What's what? You'll have to speak up a little bit. There's a bit of background noise. God loved. God, yeah, God, God loved you enough to knit you together in your mum's womb and he, he gave you the colour of skin you've got, the colour of eyes and hair. He determined your height. God has very lovingly took care of you and brought you here today. He's brought you this far. He's been very kind to you. And and think about this, he's been very kind to you and me, even though we've we've sinned against him terribly. Well, I mean, you know, we're fallen creatures. We're fallen creatures. You see, um, people... Yeah, because, you see... The God of the Bible is a holy God and he has an absolute standard of right and wrong and he made you either male or female to be to, to be to get married, have kids. Remember he said, go and populate the world. I'm sorry, I never I didn't hear that. Could you speak up a little bit? If you're transgender, yeah. Sex from male to female, or vice versa. Right. Are you still the sexes that God's made? Yeah. Well, uh, because I mean, it's quite simple, really. When uh, when someone who, who who goes through the process of transgenderism and, and says that they're now the opposite sex, when they die, and and their body is in the in the grave, if somebody was to dig up their skeleton, that would be a skeleton of the sex that they were born, right? Wouldn't it? You get what I'm saying there? If you were, say you were born a boy, and then you, you decided uh, sometime in your teen years, you, you decided you felt like you were going to be the other sex, and you lived, you lived life the other sex, then when you died, you were, your skeleton would be of a male skeleton, you see? You can't change that. What's that? You know both skeletons look the same. No, they don't. No, no, women have... Women have broader hips for childbearing. How come you didn't know that, my friend? That's basic biology. Women and men are not the same. Men can't have babies. I'm sorry to burst anyone's bubble, but men can't have babies. That's just simple biology, my friends. Doesn't matter how, how much they want to, how, how much they kick and stamp their feet, a man can't have babies. Men and women are different. Men are generally stronger than women. Women are the weaker sex, just like the Bible says. You don't, 
don't agree with that? No. Well, look, there's a joker in every pack. But you, you know, it's true because you look. You just had the uh, the Commonwealth Games, haven't they? And they had they had women running running 100 meters and men running 100 meters separate, didn't they? And the men always ran faster times than the women. Men are stronger physically than women. That's a fact. That's a fact, my friends. You can't deny that. So men and women aren't the same, are they? Yes, they are. No, they don't. Don't be silly. I'll yeah, just explain it to you. But the problem is, there's a God in the heavens, and He's not pleased with us when we go our own way and do what's right in our own eyes. You know, most people, most people are living their lives as though God doesn't exist. You know, they don't want Him interfering with their decisions in life, and it, that shows you the wickedness of mankind's heart. Because the God of the Bible, He He's a, he's a good God. He's a God who's a very loving God. And he's a God who, who's, who's taken, taken care of you, took, or took care of you uh, this far. He's provided food, shelter, clothes. You know, your families that you were born into, he's given you that. He's a good God. Hi, Jim. Yeah, there's a camera here. Yeah, nobody, nobody's bothered about cameras, Jim, these days. <laughs> okay, okay. Right, well, he does. The God of the Bible does love you for who you are. But he made you either male or female, and that's who you are. Why would you want to be anything different to what God has made you? That's my question. Why would anybody not want to be the person that God created them to be? I think. Well, he, he has a standard, doesn't he? And he says what's right and wrong. He's a he's a he's a lawgiver, and he's a moral being. And he, and he you know, and the only we know right from wrong, don't we? We we you know it's wrong to murder. You know it's wrong to steal and lie, don't you? Because you're an image bearer of God. Animals don't know right from wrong, do they? And you you know what it's like to live. Because you're made in the image and likeness of God. Animals don't. Uh, in my, like, ungodly view of what's right and wrong, mm. it's probably wrong to prey on teenagers outside of crime life. It's probably wrong to what? Prey on teenagers outside of crime life. Prey on teenagers? What do you mean, prey on teenagers? I don't know. How do you mean, prey? I'm not praying for anybody. Is that what you mean, praying? Praying, yeah. Well, I'm not praying at the moment. I'm preaching at the moment. Oh, no, no. That's not what I'm praying. I'm, on about. I'm talking about can't praying the God or anything. Oh, right. You think I'm praying on people? Well, you know, if you get saved and you get right with God through me being a pest and a nuisance and disturbing people, your peace, well, I don't mind. I'm, I'm fine with that. And, and God's fine with that. Because he says, unless you repent, unless you change your mind and align your thoughts up with him, with the, his word, you will perish. That's what God says. God commands all people, all people everywhere to repent. You see, you continue on the path that you're on, ignoring God and living life how you see fit and remaining a, a selfish a individual, just doing what's right in your own eyes, that won't end well. There's a judgment day coming. God, as he says, it's, it, it's appointed for us to die once. Every single one of us out here will die one day. And that's appointed by God. It's fixed already. Nobody's going to die any earlier than their appointed time. God, he does what he pleases. There's not a raindrop falls from that sky that doesn't hit its appointed target. Every single thing in God's universe has a purpose. There's not a speck of dust that's irrelevant in God's universe. So he even clothes the grass. He takes care of little blades of grass that nobody is concerned about. How much more has he took care of you? You're an image bearer of God. What a sad thing it is that people made in the image and likeness of God end up in hell suffering his vengeance forever. What a, what a waste of a life. Don't waste your life, my friends. Live for something greater than yourself and your feelings and your pleasure and live for the God of the Bible, the one who died on that cross to give you hope. You see, without Jesus Christ's blood, there is no hope for you. All that's left is just a fearful terrifying expectation of judgment Jesus Christ is your only hope and if you don't want him you have no hope so you just got a vain hope I mean what's what's the point of life what's the point of, what's the meaning of life just to have fun well but the problem
misses a lawgiver. So, I mean, you can try that. You say, well, God is there and he just wants you to live how you see fit. Well, what about if you go around murdering people? Is that okay? But that's the, that's the point. We're all criminals before God. Every lie we've told, he holds us accountable. The Bible says that lying lips are an abomination to God. It doesn't matter who you've been sleeping with in the bedroom. You've, you're, already, you're, already, you're already a sinner. You're already a sinner in the sight of a holy God. And on judgment day, if you remain in that condition, if you stand before God, the God of the Bible, a, a holy, righteous God, without your sins forgiven, There'll be hell to pay. He's a just judge and the judge of the earth who will do what's right. He's not looking the other way.